Heather Maxwell, thank you so much for joining us today as we commemorate the 60th anniversary of the English to Africa service. I wanted to have you on the show to talk to us about Music Time in Africa. When was the show launched and how long has it been on air? Sure. Hi, Jackson. It's a pleasure to be on. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Music Time in Africa is the, long, uh, the longest English language running program in the history of Voice of America. And it started right out in the English to Africa service and has always been there, still is, in, in 1965. So just two years after English to Africa started. So the show is about 50, 58 years old. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so talk to us about the original host of the show, uh, the legendary uh, Sarkeesian. Yes, Leo Sarkeesian was indeed a legend. He passed away in 2018. I think he was 94, 95, maybe even 96 years old. Um, he came on in 1965 and um, he was an artist and he was also a, a music lover. And um, Robert Murrow, or Edward Murrow, Mm. found him in Liberia because he was already there recording music for Hollywood films and found him and said that we want you to start working for Voice of America. So he came back and, uh, and started it in 1965, the program. And he went to, I think, every single African country over the course of his long reign as the host and the producer and recorded back then, you know, he brought uh, caravans of equipment and um, staff to help him record all in all kinds of areas across the continent at different times. That was back when we didn't even have, it was not the digital age. You know, we were using reel to reel recordings and big heavy equipment. Analog age, yeah. Yes, they had to be carried <laughs> in caravans of camel and horse and I don't know what else, big cars. And You're saying that uh, music time in Africa had access to some recordings of music that had never been seen anywhere or heard anywhere in the world. Absolutely. It was uh, tra traditional music mostly, but he also recorded contemporary music. And remember back in those days in the early 60s, that was when many African nations were had just come out of uh, colonialism. colonialism and so, yes. Yeah, and they were beginning to, you know, be n nations and they needed a radio station to represent their nation. And that was one of the mm -hmm. major nation building things. And so Leo right. was there often assisting in that. And then he would get contemporary music that had that was being recorded in those brand new um, brand new radio new, stations. Brand new studios, yeah. Yeah, so he has, we have a huge archive of hundreds of thousands of songs and recordings, including some from there, like like one of my favorites is Fela Anikulapokuti. Um, he recorded him before he found his Afrobeat sound. Wow. So he was doing more jazzy stuff. He sounded like a, a jazz musician with his band. It was during the analog years of, of radio, Mm -hmm. But this music, this catalog of music has been digitized. Where can it be found by our listeners? Right. You can listen to everything online at, it's it's a website. It's called Music Time in Africa Archive. And it is managed by the information um, service at the University of Michigan. And I will read you the, I'm looking at the uh, site right now. It's... Um, you can go to Music Time in Africa Archive. Just Google it, Music Time in Africa Archive. Mm -hmm. And you can access the original scripts. You can listen to the music. You can search it by country, artist, etc. So this is all, you know, old, older stuff from, from Leo's day. Wow. Um, since 2012. Unextensive. Yeah, it's amazing. An extensive catalog of music. Let me let yes. me ask you. So you took over from Leo Sarkeesian, who had been doing the show for decades. Uh, you're the second host of the show. You took over in 2012. Uh, what would you say are some of the key moments in the African musical landscape? And how does the show remain connected to its core mission? That's a nice question. I, w I will say there was an interim host, just to give him credit, Matthew Lavoie. He was still, he, he he had about eight years as the actual host, but Leo was still 
directing and running the show. Um, but yes, in 2012, I took over, I guess, to answer your first question, some of the highlights of the musical landscape. Um, Afro Beats mm. came up, you know, about five years ago. It seemed to overrule before that what had been more uh, sa uh, Cameroon, no, sorry, Congolese music. Yeah, Sukus you know, like and all that. Sukus, yeah. yes. So yeah. when I when I came up in 2012, I was noticing then that Afro beats with an S, not T. So it wasn't Fela <laughs> Akuti mm. sound at all. It was, mm. you know, just pop basically, but from West Africa, mostly Nigeria. The sound was starting to take, to take root. Yes. And then mm. in the past two, three years, this new thing of I'm a piano. Mm. Uh, kind of overriding and infusing. It's a it's a technique. It's a technological yeah, South, sound. South African ama piano. South South African ama piano. Yeah. Um, the other thing, the other, and this is all in contemporary music. Um, yeah. You know, traditional music kind of stays the same. So, I don't notice any real big difference there. Um, the the third thing I would say is that the Afrobeats influence on the world is amazing. I think that's probably the biggest news in the past decade mm. um really the afro beats i agree yeah because american r&b now is almost defined by afro beats i mean right. that's that's the driving um trend right now in american mm. uh, and and all of the collaboration too between artists the world as we always say but it, it's so true is becoming so much smaller right. so collaborations is just huge and the african diaspora in the united states is really taking root you know now we have generations of african americans from africa and like davido who was born here he's american mm. um and so that's that's also influencing as, as american one of pop the music. biggest uh artists of uh, the afro genre yeah yeah so, th really so cool. those are the yeah. Yeah, so those are the things that I find really striking and really fascinating. Um, and I'm sure there's more to come. Cause, you right, know. <laughs> absolutely. Tell us about some of the artists that you have featured on the show over the years since you took over as the host of Music Time in Africa. Whether it's uh, legendary bands or individual artists that have made a great impact or contribution to African music. Oliver Ntukudzi from Zimbabwe who passed a few years ago. The late great Ntukuzi. Yes. He came in the studio and then I visited him in Zimbabwe in, in his uh, music school, at his music school in the northern part of the country. Um, who else? Umu Sangare, the Malian diva. Uh, Salif Keita, also Malian great. Um, who else? Kofi Olomide. Um, most recently, the Grammy Award winner from last year, the singer Nomsibo Zikode, uh, who was actually the singer, as most of you all know, for Jerusalem, which was also a Jerusalem. big... Jerusalem, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we talked about Afro beats being, you know, driving today's American pop music, but honestly, Jerusalem, South African... Oh yeah, that was uh, was an the biggest song. Yeah, that Absolutely. song is yeah, that song is bigger than any other African yes. song. I have to say, one of the biggest uh, uh, artists that I've I've, had, I've seen you interview in the last couple of years is Baseku Kuyate. I think we we don't want to take away from the fact that this man is one of a, a kind and you know a generational artist. You know, very true. And I'm so glad you brought that up because he also represents current traditional music. So it is still very alive and well and so important in African countries, you know, with among people in communities, you know, especially in Mali and other places where you have this griot tradition where the spoken and sung word of these casted musicians is singing the history of, of generations of people from kings to families to politicians um, to also talking about social issues of the day. So, yeah, Basiku Kuyate is simply amazing with his family band. I think, Jackson, I remember you were in the studio audience. Absolutely, when he came. I was. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> I mean, 
Yes, I, 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 I've seen you interview so many great artists. I know you cannot, you, you would not even, some of them you didn't even remember. I remember that yeah. you don't remember. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I think this is a great franchise. It's a, a historic franchise that you took over and that you've been able to hold it together and, and, and have all these different voices, historic voices that have been very important to African music and African culture. But I want to ask you if you Thank had you. a chance to interview a historic artist that uh, today, uh, who would it be and what would you talk about? So I will say the first one that came to mind was Cesaria Evora, the barefoot diva oh, from yes. Cape Verde. Yes. I would have loved to interview her. And speaking of uh, Lucifone artists, one who is still alive that is a great, that I would love to interview is Bonga. Bonga. Yeah, Bonga, his voice is just a classic and he is uh angolan mm. and i have never been able to interview her i him i haven't tried though actually too hard so now that i've said this on air I get, it looks like i'm gonna have to do that you have to do it now <laughs> and your listeners are going to put you <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh finally i want you to reflect on this anniversary of the english to africa 60 years what does what does this mean to you both personally and professionally well Personally, I'm just thrilled because I'm part of the team. It makes me very proud and I'm proud to carry on this big tradition of music with English to Africa because it's known for a lot of its news programs. But English to Africa, this service specifically is known for having great music programs and Music Time in Africa is is the first and the one and only, even though we have now more that are great. So I'm very proud on a personal note to be part of the service and to be uh, heading the Music Time in Africa program. And then for what it means in general, you know, for listeners and the world, it's just so important and it continues to be so important. Um, we need to share the American story to our African audiences. My show, one thing that I will tell you, Jackson, that I think in the future, you know, you have to change and adapt to the times. And Music Time in Africa is slowly becoming something that's not only African music to Africa, but also American music, um, diasporan music mm. to Africa. Because there's a dialogue and, and, you know, the world is smaller, people are communicating. And I'm, I'm feeling that Music Time in Africa in the future, near future, is going to also include more world American music as how it is important and right. loved by African To African be that Muslims. bridge. Yes, yes, to be a bridge. Yes. So I, I look forward to it. Now we're in the digital age. I have a FaceTime, a Facebook page, and I have a Instagram. And pretty soon, Music Time in Africa is going to be radio on TV, so you can watch yes. You can watch it even even more. Heather, thank you so <laughs> much for uh, taking time to chat with us about these this important musical franchise here at the voice of america and we look forward to listening to your your shows that are coming up thank you